Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you find yourself. Bunch of dice roll here, and we are back in Iowa Plains. It is April, and it is time finally to plant field seven with corn. So uh yeah, I'm I'm pretty stoked about this. It'll be our first time using this kind's uh this kind's planter here. This is gonna be awesome. And We'll go ahead and get fired up. Get that green star three starting up there. There we go. We'll go ahead and uh, back ourselves in. Get this connected up. There we go. There we are. And let's get this bad boy out. And we are full up on seed pretty much, so I don't really need to worry about that. So yeah, um everything's good. We went ahead and spread more uh went ahead and spread more slurry out on the field, so we are looking good there. And uh, if I remember correctly. There we go, yep. Get this unfolded. All right, that is looking good. There we are. Bring this in. Nice, latched in and good to go. No longer in transport mode. I think what I'm gonna do is actually come up here. We're gonna take ourselves a turn and we're gonna go ahead and cut a headland in up along this way. And then I think we're gonna pass up and down. So we're gonna cut a couple little headlands in for corn. And then the uh, the real journey is going to be getting this field uh, properly uh, properly taken care of nitrogen wise. Now we did let this overwinter with an oilseed radish crop, and we are going to be directly seeding into that, which should give us a good uh, should give us a good bonus. And I'm actually not sure. So it's got decent nitrogen now, about. 40 to 50 kilograms per hectare. So let's see what happens when we start planting corn. All right. The articulating tractor strikes again. <laughs> All right. We're gonna get this going. Variable seed rate. And here we are. All right, missing a little. Come on, getting a little bit of edge here. There we go. About to come back and get that little bit of edge, that my little edge of shame. I really wish there was a way that I could lock the articulating on this, but I understand that that's its pivot point, which is just, it's just become little bit of an annoyance. I've been looking into potentially getting other tractors. Yeah, see, look at all that. All right, I'm gonna definitely have to get, uh, I have to get the, uh, the Starfire set up for this, but let's go ahead and check this field now here. So, uh, nitrogen, it says is bad. Okay, yeah, we need a lot more nitrogen going on here. We're not gonna get nearly as much yield as we're hoping out of this. Uh, looks like it's quite variable. That's fine. We'll definitely be coming back over it. Uh, we'll be getting everything taken care of. So I think what I'm going to do is back myself up here. I'm going to figure out how to get my Starfire linked up here so that I can get a good... All right. Yeah, we're not even going to worry about trying to seed into this right now. I'm just trying to get myself lined up. Come on. Come on, get to the edge. Just going to get ourselves lined up so that we are making sure that we're hitting the whole field. There we are. That should be good. 
That is one point. And point two. All right. I'll set my width offset, and that should be good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save this profile into our, our Starfire here. Uh, we'll get that in there. Bam, that's saved. Lock it in. Oh, wait, what the heck did I just do? Oh no. No, oh, I don't want that. I don't want this. There we are. Thank you. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm just going to screw up a little bit there. That's fine. We will turn that up. All right. There we go. We are online for this i'm going to head down to the end of this row and then we will make our way turn around come back up actually you know what this will give me a chance to cut this head lens in down here so that's fine we'll go ahead and get that cut in so that we're not uh rotating into the neighboring fields getting any sort of penalties and this will also let me cut in up here at the top of our field all right up where our um up where our greenhouses are because that's going to be important that we don't uh we don't run into issues with the greenhouses all right so there we are getting that corn planted we do have a high seed rate in our soil here. Well, we did get our soil analysis back and a lot of this field is actually loam with a few spots of silty clay uh, interspersed throughout, as well as some sandy loam. But uh, on the whole, we should expect uh, really good yields out of this field, especially once we get our nitrogen situation uh, figured out and uh, all of our pH too, so. But we're gonna go ahead, uh, get our few headlands cut in, and then I will, uh, I'll time-lapse some good drone footage for you guys to uh, be able to, you know, watch this field get planted up nice and, uh, nice and pretty like before we have to come through and do all the rest of the work we're gonna have to get done. So I'll get the headlands cut and then we will start a time-lapse.
Man, I uh, I didn't think th <laughs> I thought I was gonna run out of seed. I was very certain that that was gonna be the case. Uh, I did have to refill a thousand liters into the bins about halfway through, but holy crap, <laughs> that was a close one. Oh, you know what? I forgot to reset my statistical data about the field, so now I'm gonna be off on income. So if we take a look here on uh, the on our uh, data pad, you can see. All right, so we've put about eight thousand. Well, that's between the last one and the last reset. Hold on. Oh, uh, this is gonna suck. We're gonna reset it now, <laughs> and that's gonna be just a whole bunch of information that that's gonna be skewed now when it comes to corn, because we're not going to see the $8,000 that we spent on, well, it's not even $8,000, because that was for two seasons of planting soybeans and this. So we'll say $4,000 of seed that we put into the field, roughly. Um, and then vehicle time, fuel costs, all that. So we're not going to get a totally accurate representation, but... Uh, it'll be close enough for the for this year. Man, look at how filthy this thing got. Whew. Take it here on the wash rack, but uh, we still have plenty of work to do on the field. The field still needs to be fertilized. It needs to be rolled. Um, so. Uh, all right. Prioritize and overcome. That is what we're going to do. We have a lot to still get done. We got a lot more rows to put on that field before it's finished. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Okay, well, um, <laughs> we've run into a bit of a snag here. Uh, we are all out of slurry. So we basically got one trip around the perimeter here, uh, one headland pass, and then uh, one and a half rows, and we are out of slurry. Um, but what we're not out of is manure. And so it might be a little bit, I think funds are gonna be a little bit tight, but what I'm gonna end up needing to do is I think what I'm gonna do is take my current tipper trailer into uh, into town, sell it. And then what I was looking at was one of these guys right here, this Flegel trailer here, uh, this ASW271, because it can configure it to be a trailer as well as a manure spreader. Um, so that's gonna eat up a bunch of our money, but we should be able to get a little bit of a trade-in for our current trailer. Uh, and it, we're just gonna be riding a tight budget until we can sell soybeans come June, which is fine. We'll have enough money, we should have enough money to make it through uh, May and into June, so. Uh, yeah, that's just what we have to do. I mean, uh, I want to be able to fertilize the field, and if I don't have any fertilizer to fertilize said field, then I can't really do that now, can I? So I'm going to go ahead, head up here, and get the slurry distributor uh, and, and tank offloaded here by the barn, and then we are going to be making our way back uh, into town to sell our other trailer our other uh, tipper trailer and get that one and we'll still be able to use it on the farm uh 
Although, really, we have a much larger uh, wagon that attaches to our uh, semi-trailer. Or we have a bigger semi-trailer that attaches to our semi-truck, rather. Um, <laughs> let's get this unhooked. And I don't think I'm going to need... I don't think I'm going to need the our our big tractor here to go grab that guy. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this here and grab my smaller tractor to go pick it up. I think the smaller tractor can also run it. I don't think that we have to use our our big boy to run it out on the field. Got that all caddy wampus. Let's get this lined up. Get it put away. And we're going to make our way down to the... There we go. Make our way down to the dealership and get this squared away. All right, here it is. Uh, we were able to get about 10K out of selling our other uh, muck trailer. And now we've got... Uh, We've got this Flegel here. This is going to be great. And we still have about 25K to make it. Well, so we'll have enough money. We'll have enough money to make it into uh, the next. Uh, we'll make it. We'll have enough money to make it into June. Where we'll be able to offload a lot of our soybeans at the co-op. So now it's just getting this bad boy back onto the farm, loading manure and then uh, spreading manure onto the field. Hopefully we should have enough manure. I think we have like 115,000 liters of it. Uh, if it takes more than that, then we're uh, in serious trouble until we get pigs. <laughs> the pigs are going to be the salvation. Uh, well, that and the increase in the, the herd for cattle, uh, which should be around uh, June, July. So, yeah, I'm pretty pumped about this, though. I, I love the fact that I can not have to spend money on fertilizer. I mean, I'm still have to spend money on lime, which is fine, but uh, you know, it's going to be nice to have this fertilizer be able to just uh throw this manure out here onto the field. Manure and slurry, uh it's going to be great. So, yeah, we're going to go get this loaded up and I think what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and time lapse some of that and we will go from there.
Okay, guys, um, <laughs> we might have a bit of a problem here. Um, so we have our manure spreader here. And uh, we only have enough manure to fill this thing up one more time. And we still have a good portion of field to cover. So maybe I grossly overestimated the amount of uh, manure and uh, liquid manure that we had here on the farm. So I definitely think that once uh, we double up our our herd here and get these pigs in, we'll be in much better shape. But I mean, if you take a look, that is all we have left. We had 115,000 liters, 115 cubic meters of manure. And uh, yeah, there's gonna be like 2,000 or two cubic meters left in here once I grab the rest of this out of here. Now, the good part is, is that we did cover a very large portion of the field. A very large portion of the field has been, uh, has been, been taken care of. So that is, that's the good part to it. Just the bad part is that, uh, you know, I don't think we're gonna be able to get the whole field. That's, that's my concern. Now, that'll be okay. We're still gonna get a way better crop yield out of uh, this corn than we would have uh, otherwise. The beautiful thing was that because we had soybeans in that field and because the soybeans weren't uh, very heavy on their nitrogen needs, that uh, once, you know, we basically, uh, we no-tilled planted into those soybeans. And so, so yeah, um, give me a moment here. I'll get out to the edge of the field. We'll pop the, uh, we'll pop the drone out real quick and we can kind of take a look and see what all we have left to do here. Uh, yeah, this should be a good spot right about here. You can see where I was where I stopped slurrying over to here. Um but yeah, so we have all this section still to do. There is uh this area that's been slurried, so I'm not gonna be worried about doing that. Not worried if it's got slurry. <laughs> but yeah, we still have quite a bit to cover. Which is fine, which is fine. Honestly, I feel like we're gonna have enough to, I mean, if we don't finish out the field, that's fine, it's okay. We have enough of the field taken care of that I'm okay with it. But yeah, it's just uh, it's a little surprising to me because I thought that, you know, we had such a large amount. And let me make sure we get our gate open there. All right, cool. We'll have that going into the little uh, little spreader area. And we'll get this out here onto the field. And I think that should be about good. Uh, so we should hopefully, I mean, we should be able to get, I would say, four to five passes out of what we have in here. Um, which should be, should be more than enough. It should be more than enough. There we are. I'm gonna head down here to the end of the field and kind of turn myself around. Yeah, we should be able to get, we should be able to get really close. Um, but if we actually pop out, we take a look at it here. You can see we have really good nitrogen coverage here. Um, pH is still a little, eh, but I mean, we've got better nitrogen coverage with the manure than we do with the slurry. So, Manure is going to be the way to go. Normally, one would be using uh, anhydrous as a fertilizer in your cornfield. Um, but I had all this manure. So traditionally, though, it's uh, anhydrous. Anhydrous ammonia is what you would be spraying the field with. So, but... I'm using what we got. We don't have an anhydrous source on the farm, and I do not have a uh, a sprayer that would be able to handle spraying the anhydrous while also doing the John Deere sensing and all that other stuff. Not yet. Uh, hopefully, hopefully in a couple of years we'll be able to upgrade that equipment. But you know, I'm going to use what I got, and what I got right now is uh, solid and liquid manure. And so, yeah, you know. All natural, we're getting out here, we're getting after it in an all natural way. Let's go. Let's get ourselves turned here. Yeah, yeah, we should be able to get a few more passes on this field. A few more passes. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna make it all the way to the end, but you know what, we can get pretty dang close. I think we can get pretty dang close. 
if not i mean we're still going to be doing good uh the loam uh the the field is predominantly loam and so we're going to have an above average yield and i think that'll just counterbalance out what is not going to be hitting a peak yield which is fine um, but corn, we're going to have a lot of corn and corn sells pretty good. Uh, I can also use corn for helping to feed the pigs, but I think I'm going to exclusively try to save that for being potatoes. I think potatoes is really where we're going to go with that. And I did, uh, move some soybeans and some wheat, uh, over from the, from the pigs or to the pig barn. So we do have some material over there. We have a little bit of wheat. We have a little bit of soybeans. Um, so now it's just going to be getting those potatoes in. Come on. We'll be getting those potatoes in there. And some corn in there. Yeah. But yeah, so we're getting this all spread out. And then uh, honestly, we might see if anybody needs any help on their fields this year. Uh, I would like to get some, I'd like to put a little bit more money into the, uh, the operational funds here. And so if I can knock out most of my chores, I do need to mix up a couple more wagons of TMR that needs to be done. Uh, and then I do need to do some services here on the, uh, the 6155. I, uh, I need to hit the grease points, make sure those are good uh just general maintenance at this uh at this this schedule of operational hours just nothing nothing too crazy i should be able to bang that out uh in in a couple of days and get that all done uh as long as i don't have to order any parts we haven't been having any issues with it though so that is that is a plus but definitely need to hit the grease points and it wouldn't hurt to uh also hit the pressure washing station just to kind of get some of this manure and everything off of the tires. <laughs> All right, so I actually just finished feeding the cows and uh, made sure that they're nice and topped up on their TMR for the next couple of months. And that is going to be good because, like I said, it uh, should be about... Well, let's take a peeky peek here. It should be... Yeah, uh, next month they should be giving birth, so we should be doubling our herd next month, which is exciting. Uh, also, next month we have our first big grass harvest. I could have uh, baled hay now, but uh, I wouldn't be getting the kind of yield that I'll be getting baling the uh, hay and silage uh, as I will in June. So, so yeah, put it off for a little bit. But I'm also kind of glad that I did because I just got off of the phone with Dave down at the dealership. Once again, good old Dave just coming in clutch for us. And uh, they have a baler in there on sale. Uh, I actually recently took in my weeder and sold it because I am direct seeding into my fields and kind of going no-till, I haven't really been having any issues with weeds on the field. Uh, so there was really no point in me having that. So I was able to get that out there uh, into another farmer's hands. And I think we did we did about eight eight $8,000 uh, in, in trade-in for that. But we have our Pottinger here and this thing's been great, but we have had a few uh, mistakes that we've made in the past with it namely uh where i i accidentally bailed things uh too big to actually be wrapped and so i guess before i, I run out there i'll pull it up uh, i'll pull up the website here on my pda for you guys uh so there is this massey ferguson in right now um is their protect series i uh, will still be able to run it with the 6155 and it max out at 150 centimeter bale so i don't have to worry about accidentally uh bailing a 180 centimeter uh grass bale like i did last time and kind of wasting that those resources so i'm gonna go ahead plus i'll get a little bit more trade in on this guy which is good that's gonna be just a little bit of extra money to get us ready into next month where we will be uh, taking our soybeans in, getting our soybeans sold. So, so yeah, things are doing good. Wheat field, as you can see, driving by here, wheat field is looking nice. Everything is looking real clean over there. Um, down here, the corn, the corn came in beautifully, absolutely beautifully. And the potatoes 
are in nice too so we're going to be getting just some real real good harvest going on um yeah so unfortunately no job and work uh nothing that was going to be worth the time really a lot of uh low pay uh weeding jobs a lot of them not paying over two or three grand and that's just uh no bueno for me uh there was a couple of bailing contracts out there but uh i you know i've got a bunch of my own grassland care to take care of and i don't want to be putting uh even more wear and tear on my equipment uh, I don't mind going out and doing harvesting jobs and stuff like that, but, but yeah, uh, ooh, they, they look like, what do you guys got here? You guys got carrots going on? What you guys got going on in this field? Parsnips. Ooh, okay, okay. Maybe we'll be able to get a jump on that this year. <laughs> Maybe we'll be able to, to get in on some of that parsnip action, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we missed being able to do corn there last year in that field. They planted corn. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead. We're going to take this, uh, this baler, get it traded in. And I mean, it's, it's, it's a double, it's a, it's a double whammy for me. One, I can't accidentally goof up and bail the wrong size bail. Um, but two, it's also a few extra dollars in the pocket when, you know, we're running dang near uh 9k a month in expenses having a little bit of extra cushion a little bit of extra padding uh let's do a few repairs too while we're here we'll repair that we'll repair you that's just gonna oh yeah look at that that's nice so we'll, yeah, we'll spend a little bit of money here and we will go ahead and sell this pottinger impress and goodbye and then we will purchase um let's see this would all Nice to have too, but it's 220 horsepower, and I just don't got that oomph in the tank. So, uh, but we get this Massey Ferguson here. Um, this is nice. It's got a bail end turner on it, which is great. Uh, we like that bail end turner. That just basically takes our round bales and stands them up vertically. It makes it easier for us to pick them up. And I think we'll just stick with our black foil coloring. So, yeah, that that's good. So, 43K. So, we ended up coming out of this so like uh like a 20k like a 20k uh increase and we, we are gonna hook up to here and we're gonna bring it in and have uh the maintenance guys take a look at it see if there's any repairs that need to be done i mean we could actually go do that on the farm instead but yeah just look at this thing absolutely gorgeous bale and turner massey ferguson's are pretty nice i do also like massey tractors uh they're they're pretty pretty quality but let's go ahead get hooked up to this and i think we'll have we'll bring it over here and have the uh the guys here at the dealership take a look at it so once again big thank you to dave there thanks dave for letting us know about that he does a real all right guys we are on our way with a truckload of soybeans uh so we're just gonna drop this one truckload off i still have about uh 40k worth of soybeans sitting there in storage and i want to keep those in there as part of the feed for the pigs so um you know if you don't remember uh for feeding the piggies for feeding the little pigarinos here we need to have a base uh our base is going to be corn grain we need wheat or barley we have wheat protein is going to be soybeans and our root crop is going to be potatoes so we do have uh you know we we're growing the corn and the potatoes i want to leave the soybeans and we'll be taking a portion of the wheat uh also so we're going to just take this much. I feel like uh, we'll probably do another soybean crop. I have a feeling that next year I'll be able to expand the farm again. Uh, but it'll also be, we'll also see how many potatoes I get. Because if I get a good harvest on potatoes, which I should, then I could take that same potato field, uh, let it oil seed over winter, and then seed soybeans into it come uh, springtime. Yeah, I think that'll work. Uh, it just really depends on what our yield looks like. But we're going to run these soybeans in. Uh, right now, we're heading to the grain uh, to the grain elevator, I believe. And uh, they have like some of the best pricing on soybeans right now. 
so uh, they're just shy of uh, twenty one hundred dollars per thousand liters. So we are going to be looking. Yeah, there's the grain elevator over there. We're going to be looking at a really good payout for this. A uh, really good payout, which I'm excited for. But yeah, because we could definitely use this money. Um, it, it's it's definitely whoa necessary. Ooh, yeah, we are we are very heavy right now. Our turning is uh is very labored. And the poor man truck is, uh, it's on the struggle bus right now. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, there we are. We're going to get down here, get into this grain elevator. I had to mark it because I don't think I've actually sold anything down here before. Nothing that I can remember. Um, Actually, this might just be from a different angle that I'm hitting it. I think that's actually the case. Yeah, that's the case. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it was just a different angle. I was actually used to coming from uh, the northern approach here instead of uh, coming all the way down from the south of the map. But yeah, this is I'm really hoping for just a real, real good. Uh, I mean, we should be getting about a hundred and hundred and fifteen hundred and twenty K out of this. So a lot of stuff going on. I just wanted to make this run here into town and get this stuff sold off. And go from there. Yeah, yeah, see, yep, yep, see, yep, 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 yep. All right. Yeah, I just came from a different approach. All right, that's fine. I'm here, cross this line, make sure the train isn't coming. Train's not coming, thankfully. And big money, big money in no whammies. Uh, we might even go ahead and try to pay off one of our, uh, try to pay off one of our loans just outright if we can. I don't want to take too much money away from myself, but I could make a special allotment payment and make a big pay down. So let's see what we got going on here. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, that's glorious. And it just keeps on going. The gift that keeps on giving. 124 okay so we got a hundred and thirty two hundred and thirty three thousand dollars because of our environmental bonus we have a seven percent environmental bonus uh based on just how well we've been taking care of the fields and everything so yeah that's uh that's big that's really big i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take i want to mm, i think i'm gonna take 80k of that and do some payoffs here. Let's take a look at our loan. Um, I could I could outright take care of this loan. This loan would be absolutely gone. But I think if anything, I want to take this main loan that we have here and do a special redemption on that. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay. I want to say like uh, 50k on this one, a special repayment. So we have 50k paid off on that. And then uh we'll put the other 30k onto this loan. I mean, can I actually uh, no, okay. It is so we'll do 30k onto this loan. Bam, bam. Okay, so that's great. Um that's really good. That's gonna take us we're gonna get paid off significantly quicker now. Um so yeah, 80, 83K is still plenty for us to work with, uh, operations funds and whatnot. That's definitely going to be good money that is going to help us, uh, especially with getting all of our pigs too. I'm thinking we're going to get like, um, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what type of pigs we want to get yet. Um, I think maybe like some land races, but I, I don't know. I have to do a little more research into my pigs and see which ones I feel are going to be a best fit on the farm. Uh, but I am super excited. I mean, that is going to be so good for us. I do already have some soybeans in the storage. I don't know how many. That's a problem. Okay. I can't remember how much stuff I put in. I think there's like 10K in there, which isn't very much. Um i'm also not sure how many pigs i'm going to start off with because pigs are an animal that i would be selling i'd have to get in touch with joel uh down at the um animal animal husbandry and department and talk with him see what, what what's going to be good here um if it's going to be like um you know, like berkshires or, or what what kind of pigs are going to be more suitable for this uh kind of 
environment and then figure out how many of them I can get my hands on because uh, we'll definitely be getting them in the fall. And I don't know, uh, really, honestly, don't know too terribly much about them. So I'm going to be taking some time over the next few months to really research and get a better idea and grasp on pigs. But yeah, I mean, that was good. That was a heck of a payout. Uh, I'm very excited about that. We were able to get a nice chunk paid off on our loan that we had taken out. Uh, that is great. And, and yeah, so... Now I'm just extra looking forward to harvesting, harvesting that wheat, harvesting uh, my grass field uh, over here. This is gonna be just awesome. Look, look at this fields up here. It's looking majestic. It's nice and grown. Oh uh, yeah, we're gonna be getting some real good. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna do silage this first run around. I'm gonna load silage. That way it has some time to ferment and then I will do uh, dry hay uh on our next harvest i should have plenty of uh i should have plenty of food still in and then actually we do have uh let me just go ahead and pull down here and then we'll come across the street because we do have the we should have the new calves now and so i'm gonna have to take a look and figure out what our food uh requirements are looking like there but man yeah i'm just i'm pumped i'm absolutely pumped uh I wouldn't mind. I mean, I've got a lot of wheat right now, but I'm going to hold on to some of that just because we have the chickens to feed wheat to. We'll have the pigs to feed the wheat to as a grain. So. All right. We are looking good. We'll just get ourselves put in here. That's nice. All right. Uh, yeah, let's go up real quick up to the. Uh, to the cattle barn and we'll kind of take a look we'll see what things are looking like we'll bust out the pdf and give it a good look-see as well uh but yeah then the only other thing we've got going on is harvesting that grass field over there i'm really excited to see how many bales we're going to get out of that bad boy um all right so let's see how we're looking here so we do have 100 cattle now um we have plenty of food in stock for them we got twenty thousand liters of milk and already back up 30,000 liters of slurry. Thank, thank goodness. I mean, we were <laughs> in 20K here. All right, this is great. We're building our stockpiles back up, guys. We're building back up our stockpiles. Uh, so now we take a look at our PDF. We're seeing that right now with these new baby cows, new baby cows here, uh, these guys have increased our daily food limit uh, a little bit here. So we're we're burning nearly 300,000 liters and it's going to keep going up uh, as they continue to mature. Right now they're just babies. Um so we got 42 straw bales in here, 18 hay, 23 silage. So actually I might do hay cuz hay is where we're a little low on right now. So I think I might bale hay this time around. We'll do some dry hay and then we'll do silage next harvest cuz we have a few more uh silage bales and we do hay bales so all right um i'm gonna get out here on this i'm gonna get out here on this field <laughs> i'm gonna slow down my talking i'm gonna get on the field with the hx20 we're gonna get that mode out and then i guess we'll get all the bailing and everything done with our new baler i'm really excited to run that so we got to go out there we got a mo ted windrow uh bale and then haul so we've got a long day ahead of us out in the field to handle all of that but that is the way that the cookie crumbles sometimes sometimes you have a long day ahead of you that's why i have uh that's why i got some snacks with me i got some good snacks here in the tractor and a big old jug of ice water because it is a little warm today but Let's get ourselves hooked up and make our way out here to the field, get this mower running. Actually, I do need to do some services on the mower to hit a few of the grease points before I get out here and actually start cutting. So I think what we do is we'll, we'll hit some of these grease points. I'll get the field mowed up. You guys have seen me mow the field a thousand times. 
Uh, but we'll come back for the bailing portion of it just so we can see how many bales we get out of it. Because historically, we get about 23 to 26 bales. Uh, I'm going to be really excited to see since we have uh, taken the time to really let the grass grow uh, and we have taken the time to increase our nitrogen on the field. Uh, our, our, our yield has gone up by about 20%. We're still not at max potential. And I think I could even fix that by uh, taking some of that manure and spreading it out here on the field. Uh, I think that might be something that we do actually bef between uh, this harvest. So, but anyway, yeah, there's a few grease points on the, on the mower that I need to hit. And then I will come back for baling and we'll see how many bales we get. all right uh yeah so we are at a total of uh, off the bale counter here 27 and we're fit working on a 28th bale that means that we increased our crop yield by two full bales or uh 13 thousand liters 13 cubic meters yeah wow okay we're still gonna have a little bit more uh i would say that's been it's a pretty successful day. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish this up, and we'll come bring the bale cart by tomorrow. But, uh, yeah, I think this is going to be it for the episode. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Uh, thank you so much for all the traction we've been getting. Uh, we've been getting a, a big influx of views lately. So thank you. Uh, let's also turn those views into subs. Come on, guys. You can press that button. Help me get to 1,000 before the end of the year uh but yeah thank you so very much for being here i will catch you guys with some more uh farm shenanigans in the next episode and until then have a great morning afternoon or evening wherever and whenever you are budget dice roll signing off